Okay, Dr. Matthew J. Trom here. Um, you're back from your break, and we're ready to continue with our Boothroyd and Dewhurst uh, assembly time estimation. Um, I got to the point where I had determined uh, the first step was a handling step. Uh, alpha was my angle of rotation, beta, um, sorry, my angle of symmetry, um, orthogonal to the insertion axis, beta is my angle of symmetry. Um, Around the insertion axis, I sum them together to get 360, and now I have to look up my handling and insertion code. Uh, where do I get the handling and insertion code? Well, it turns out that um, Boothright and Dewhurst have prepared charts for us, um, and I'll show you guys there's two different charts because you can either have a handling process or an insertion process. Um, and so here is the chart that's associated with manual insertion. And then here is a separate chart that's associated with manual handling. Since I'm dealing with a handling process and just picking up the bolt, I'm gonna start with, with the manual handling chart. So I'm gonna use uh, my red ink here. I'm just gonna circle uh, manual handling to remind myself that that's what I'm doing. This, by the way, is um, step number one. So we'll just record that on here. Good to kind of keep a record of these things. Um, so once I've got manual handling for step number one, the first thing that I have to decide is how many hands I'm using to do that process, again, of, of grabbing this part and whether I need a special tool or not. So I've got the option of just picking it up with one hand. I can do one hand with a grasping aid. I can do two hands required for manipulation because maybe this part is big enough that I need two hands to sort of turn it, which would be something like that. Um, and then three is two hands are required for large size, right? The part is just so big, so heavy, so unwieldy that you need to like pick it up with two hands because it's so heavy, right? That's not the case for us now. Um, I can pick this up with one hand. I don't need tools to pick it up. So I'm going to circle one hand here which puts me in kind of the top section of this manual handling table. Uh, the next thing that I need to determine is the sum of my symmetry angles. So I've got a couple of options. Uh, alpha beta is less than 360. Alpha beta is somewhere between 360 and less than 540. Alpha beta is 540 but less than 720 or alpha plus beta is greater than 720. Well, we just calculated that it's alpha plus beta is 360. So I'm going to be right here. 360 is equal to alpha plus beta, and that gives me the first number in my two number handling code um, for this first step of the process, which is the number one. The next thing that I need to figure out is where I am in terms of the column. So, so I should mention um, number one here means that I'm going to be associated with this row. So I'm going to highlight this row by just underlining it there in red. Right, so um, I'm gonna be somewhere along that row and I need to find the associated column that lines up with that row. So, so where is it? Well, the way that I find it um, is I start reading down from the top. So my first option is, are parts easy to grasp and manipulate or do the parts present handling difficulties? Well, remember parts that present handling difficulties are parts that are slippery, sharp, hot, dangerous to handle in some way. Um, and would cause the uh, the user to need to exercise the assembler to exercise additional care uh, in trying to pick up the part so as not to drop it or injure him or herself. Um, I could pick this up without hurting myself. It's nylon, right? So there isn't even any danger of me accidentally cutting myself on the threads. So so this is definitely a part is easy easy to grasp and manipulate. So I'm gonna circle this guy. Um, then that leads me to my next my next uh, decision is I have to measure the thickness. So what is the thickness? Well, according to Boothroyd and Dewhurst, the thickness um, is the smallest um, dimension across a part that you might actually grasp across, right? So, um, you know, when I pick this up, I, I usually grab here, but the smallest dimension that I grasp across is, is probably this one, the threads. So, so I, I, I want to be as conservative as possible, um, and so smaller dimensions, as you guys will learn if you uh, watch uh, my other video on this topic, um, the smaller dimension leads to longer assembly times, and I want to be conservative. 
pick the longest possible reasonable assembly time so that it's an engineering overestimate rather than an underestimate, right? Because if you overestimate the ultimate time and cost, you can always, um, you know, re assess and move that that value down but if you underestimate the time and cost it's often very difficult to, to reassess and move something up right that's why projects go over budget for example um, so i'm going to use this dimension here uh, as my thickness dimension um, and so let me um let me turn on my calipers let me make sure that they're zeroed set to metric okay cool so i'll we'll put it in here and it looks like 12.6 millimeters uh whoop, that's not across the threads there we go 12 point okay we'll call it 12.5 12.5 millimeters um which is of course thicker than two millimeters and so i'm going to circle this guy which puts me into one of these three columns and so now that i've got the thickness i have to measure the size the size is the longest linear dimension um, so let's make sure my calipers are zeroed they are and I'm going to go back and measure this longest linear dimension, and it's 39.5 millimeters, which means that I have a size that's much larger than 15 millimeters, so I'm going to circle this guy. And if I now take my straight edge, that brings me down that column, which means that ultimately this is my first value. Um, 1.5 seconds. So how do I record that now in my chart? Well, I'm going to use a handling code. Um, so the handling code is going to be 1 comma 0. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Let's do this in black so it's easier to see. So 1 comma 0. There we go. Usually handling codes are written in, in parentheses, right? So 1 comma 0. Where do I get 1 comma 0 from? Well, here's 1, right? So I read the row first. Zero, that, that's right here. I didn't circle it, but there it is. Um, so that's the column. I'm going to circle it now so that it's clear. There's the column that I'm using. So my handling code is one comma zero. And where the row number one and the column number zero cross, that's the time associated with the handling process of reaching out and picking this up from the bin. So, so there you go. Um, the other thing that I should mention while we're here is as you look at this manual handling chart, Every single uh, handling time is associated with a unique combination of two numbers, a unique coordinate system. So we've got a one comma zero process, but if I had say a three comma five process, here's three, here's five, that would be 2.73 seconds. If I had a six comma six process, that would be here's six, here's six, that would be 7.55 uh, seconds and so forth. So um, every one of these times, every single one um, has a unique code. Um, and so those codes are what are used to uh, determine um, what the exact process time is based on looking up um, that particular assembly process in these charts. So for the process time, I'm gonna put 1.5 seconds. And I'm going to leave this blank, but I leave justification here just in case, uh, you know, there might have been multiple options, right? Like you might have decided for some reason that this part presented handling difficulties. Maybe instead of being made out of nylon, it's made out of stainless steel, <coughs> fresh from um, having the threads cut. And maybe the threads are quite sharp, in which case you might want to avoid just grabbing it by the threads because you could potentially be cut, in which case it, it might present handling difficulties, even though the part is dimensionally the same. Um, so the justification I leave here for you to write in just in case something unusual like that happens and, and you want kind of a record of why you made a particular decision. Um, okay, so we've got step one now in the books. I'm going to move this out of the way and we will move to step two. Step two, well, in step one, remember, I've got this thing grasped in my uh, my non-dominant hand, and in step two, I've got my fidget nut, and I need to pick it up and prepare to insert one into the other. So the reaching out from the and picking up from the bin of the fidget nut is my step number two, my handling process number two. Okay, so let's uh, go through the same process that we went through before to try to figure out um, what the alpha and the beta angles are, since we already know. Um, that this is a handling process. So now this time I'm going to point my, my pen this way um, to the left and that is going to indicate, whoops, 
It's like a game of dominoes. There we go. This is going to indicate the insertion direction, right? I'm holding this part. I'm now going to pick up this part in such a way that I can um, insert it. So what does that insertion process look like? It looks like this. So the insertion direction is there. My alpha angle, again, is an angle around an axis that's orthogonal to the insertion direction. The insertion direction is straight to the left. So an orthogonal direction to that is straight up out of the page. And so rotation in alpha looks like this, right? I'm rotating around that axis, which is orthogonal orthogonal to the insertion angle. So that's rotation in alpha. All right. So what do we have for alpha? Well, in this case, um, I can successfully insert this guy this way. If I turn it 90 degrees, oh, nope, that doesn't work. If I turn it 180 degrees, ah, yes, this is a threaded hole, right? So I should be able to thread this part on both that way. And if I rotate him through, 180 degrees. I should also be able to thread him on that way, right? Which I can. It's the same in both directions. And so for purposes of this assembly, um, alpha here is going to be 180 degrees. That's the angle that I have to turn this to restore the original symmetry that I had uh, when I had it aligned for insertion the first time. What's beta? Well, beta is zero for the same reason that it was zero for this part, which is this guy has got threads on it, right? So if I look here, there's threads on the inside. And so it doesn't really matter how this part is oriented with respect to this part, so long as they're lined up correctly, if I start turning this, and remember the turning is the insertion step, so long as I turn this in the insertion step, those threads will line up and I'll be, I'll be good to go. I'll have my process finished. So for our purposes, the angle there is beta because it does not matter how this is oriented around its insertion axis uh, when, I, when I do that insertion step. All right, so let's add those together. I get 180 degrees and let's go to my handling chart. Now, um, again, I've got two different charts that I could possibly use. One is an insertion chart the other one is a handling chart. And remember, we're still handling, right? I've just picked up the part. I haven't inserted it yet. And so I'm going to get rid of the insertion chart and I'm going to stick with the handling chart. So manual handling. Ooh, let's do it in red. So we're consistent. So manual handling. And this is going to be step number two, right? And I'm going to just keep track of these so that I can refer back to them if for some reason there's a question about um, why I picked a particular uh particular combination of numbers. Okay, next question. Am I dealing with one hand, one hand with grasping tools, two hands, or two hands because of large size? Well, hey, look, I can pick this up with one hand. No tools needed, no problem. So I'm going to circle one hand. And what is my sum of alpha plus beta? Well, remember from before, it's 180 degrees. And so let's circle uh, this guy. Alpha plus beta is less than 360 because it's 180. And that gives us the first number in our two number handling time, uh, handling coordinate, which is zero. I'm going to grab my straight edge. I'm going to come along here and draw in this line to remind myself that somewhere in this row is the time that I'm interested in uh, for, for this particular uh, handling process. Um, okay, how do I get the column? Well, I've got to remember, I'm now reading down. Is the part easy to grasp and manipulate or is it presenting difficulties? It's easy to grasp and manipulate. I've broken all the corners and I've sanded the part down so there's no sharps or anything on here. It's, it's not hot, so easy to pick up. So I'm going to grab parts are easy to grasp and manipulate. And I'm going to now take a measurement to get the thickness. Remember, again, the thickness is the smallest linear dimension that you could potentially grasp the part from. Uh, I got my caliper. I've got it zeroed. Um, I'm going to take a measurement. Again, I'm operating in millimeters instead of inches. 6.4 millimeters. 6.4 millimeters is going to be thicker than 2 millimeters. So I'm going to circle this guy. Next, I need the size. What's the size? It's the largest dimension. So the largest linear dimension, let's just check to make sure that that's zero. Yep. Okay. Largest linear dimension. These are an inch by an inch. So, hey, that's pretty good, right? 25.4 <laughs> millimeters is one inch. So that's going to be uh, my size. 
greater than 15 millimeters, and that gives me a zero here. So I'm gonna grab my straight edge, and I'm gonna draw down like so. And I've got a zero, zero handling process, the best possible, fastest possible handling process that you could have on a print and do her chart. 1.13 seconds. So I'm gonna go back here and finish this line. Step number two, handling my code in black is zero comma zero, fastest process I can have, great. 1.13 seconds, uh, and I'll leave the justification open because I don't need to remind myself how I got there. Um, okay, I'm right at 15 minutes, so I'm gonna stop, take a break, uh, and then we'll start from here and do the next step uh, in the process and, until we wrap up. Okay, take a break, see you in a second.